Hey guys, today we're going to do MTG Finance Week and I, I left my charger for my laptop at work so I had just have to make a little bit uh, shorter video so I'll try to make it fast. Uh, rotations happening so for the rest of this week I'm going to do a top 5 pickups for rotation for each set that's rotating. Uh, let's begin with the first set, Pharos. Uh, Pharos number 5, I have Elspeth. Elspeth is still kind of expensive. Uh, you can wait until she rotates a little bit more before picking her up, but I love Elspeth. I think it might be modern playable. Uh, it is that type of card where, yeah, it costs six, and in modern, you're not, you know, you're not particularly happy to pay six for a card, but it does end the game, and it ends the game in a unique way. Um, when you look at game ending scenarios, Elspeth presents a, she has a wrath effect, she has this the tokens that actually make her bigger and then she has the ultimate which just ends the game but the token creation is something that you look at and say wow like that's got to be dealt with very quickly or you're going to be overrun with tokens and even if you board wipe unless you're board wiping the planeswalker as well so damnation is not going to really help um languish i don't know if anybody's playing languish but maybe they have rhinos in their deck uh it's not going to help uh you can in the right deck, Elspeth is still very good in modern. Now, number four is a personal speculation of mine. So I always start, if I have copies of this and you know larger quantities than a dozen, I'll tell you. Mademe the Ageless. Now, he looks like a good EDH commander. I don't know why people are not playing him. He looks fantastic. Uh, anytime you have an EDH commander that can give you extra turns, uh, it's worth looking for it because that's what people like to do. People like to take extra turns and it's kind of like skipping the line for amusement park. People really like that type of stuff. So Madame the Ageless at like a dollar, like 20 or something, like he's like a dollar. Uh, he is an interesting speculation because as a EDH general, I can see him being a build around me type of general and I can see him being very very good because remember when you're taking an extra turn and you're playing against like three other people what you're really doing is you're really skipping all three of their turns so it's not just like the net gain of one for EDH it's I suppose higher than that anyway three profit of Kufix another dollar card it is dominant when I mean dominant in EDH I mean if you have Simic in your colors why would you not play this card um it is in every EDH deck I've played that has Simic in it. People love it. It is very good. You get to play more. I mean, it just produces so much uh, from the creature standpoint, from the mana standpoint, from the land standpoint. It just does everything that you want a EDH creature to do. And the fact that it's not legendary uh, might help it in modern. I don't know. I feel like it is a very unique kind of combo piece. It is expensive at five, but... You know, stranger stuff has happened. Um, number two, Fasa. Now, if out of all these cards that I've talked about, obviously my number one, I'll just say is Thoughtseize. I'll just get that out of the way. You guys know I love that card. Fasa is probably the most modern ready playable card. Uh, she has a home in Merfolks. I assume that, you know, what I mean a home, I mean, see, see some play in some decks, some tier two versions of it. I like Fasa a lot. I like her as an EDH commander. I like her as a tiny leader. I like her just generally. Um, Scrying is very, very good, and the Miracle Scry deck would appreciate her. There's a lot of options, so she has the most options, I guess, to be played in the most types of formats. And I, in my opinion, she can be absolute house sometimes. Number one is, you know, the modern, the legacy, the vintage. Turn one, dot sees. Um, that's not going to go away anytime soon in modern or legacy. And I've always said if it's strong enough in legacy, it's strong enough in modern power wise. Uh, and you know, a dominated standard it is one of the strongest cards. It used to be an $80 card before reprints. I don't have any problem picking it up at 25 in trade or 20 in cast. A lot of people are saying that it will go down in price, but it will, yeah, I agree. It will go down in price, but not that much. And honestly, if you have a standard player and they're at least a tiny bit interested in modern, they are going to keep the DOS season. So good luck trading for them because they will be very difficult to trade for. Uh, most players are going to realize, hey, if there's one card from Pharos I'm going to keep, it is DOS season. And, you know, its price should go up in price. Like, 
it, it shouldn't be lower than abrupt decay. Eventually, it'll be higher. Sees more play than abrupt decay. Has more power level. Is stronger than abrupt decay. Uh, give it time and we're barring a reprint. And it shouldn't really be reprinted in like modern masters. I suspect uh, because it was reprinted in standard. Darcy's. I love the card. Yes, it will go down, but. Good luck trying to get trade for copies of it unless you start early. So those are my top five for Pharaohs. I'm gonna do uh, Born of the Gods, Journey into Next, and M15 next. I know a lot of you guys like to do MTG financing stuff. So yeah, that's what we're doing this week. Bye guys.